If you aren't already using them and you want to level up your photography, local adjustments in Lightroom are absolutely one of the best ways to do it. What is up guys? My name is Austin James Jackson, professional landscape photographer based here in the beautiful Southern Utah area. In today's video, we are talking about local adjustments in Lightroom. Now, global adjustments are things like your basic sliders, which are going to adjust things like exposure, highlights, shadows, saturation, all those things. Now, you may not know, but you can do the same exact things using a local adjustments where you're just affecting certain parts of the photo. This is going to be useful for things like brightening a particular tree, uh, making a model's hair a little bit brighter, increasing the saturation of a canyon wall, whatever it may be, you can locally adjust your photo. That's going to be how you really help to bring your photo over the top and make it just absolutely stunning and over the top good. Now in this video, I'm showing you how to make these local adjustments in Lightroom Classic. You could also do these things in Adobe Camera Raw if you don't use Lightroom and you're just a Photoshop user, but that is where we're going to be doing things. Let's go ahead and jump right in there over into Adobe Lightroom. So here in Lightroom, one way you can really enhance and up your photo editing game, no matter what kind of photos you take, is by using these local adjustments. Now you find these local adjustments right here when you're in the develop module, you find them under this little uh, masking circle. You go ahead and click on that and then you can see you have a lot of options. This might look confusing, but let me break it down for you. You can add a new mask based on subject, sky, or background. This is going to use AI technology to essentially have the photo determine which one of these three um, you want to do in your photo. So if I clicked sky, you'll notice how it'll select the sky. Um, but more often than not, I'd recommend using the bottom four here. Objects doesn't work very well. I tried on so many different photos before I made this tutorial video to see if I could pull it off and objects just doesn't work well at this point in time. So for that reason, I recommend using these bottom four options more often than not. Um, sky can sometimes work okay in the right circumstance, but not always. Now, what you need to understand is how a mask works. It's the same way in Photoshop. If I select sky here, Anything that's white is going to be totally selected. Anything that's black is going to be totally unselected. Anything in between is going to be partially selected. So you'll notice um, now I have this sky selected as a mask. If I go over and I adjust any of these settings on the right side, it'll just affect the area that is masked. So it will just affect the area that's white or partially gray, but it'll affect the white areas far more than it will affect something like this that's almost completely black. Now, if I adjust this, you can see how we are adjusting the exposure of just the masked area. Now, you want to be careful when you do something like this if you are trying to create a hard edge and you're adjusting the exposure a lot, because if I do that on this photo, you'll notice how this area here gets a little bit washed out because it's going to start to get a little bit darker and it's just not going to look good. So you want to be really careful um, for creating halos like that. I'm going to take a step back here. And I'm going to show you the four different options here as we select them. So in the most simple form, a brush is probably the easiest way to use these local adjustments. You can go ahead and click on brush and then you can simply just paint. So for practical purpose, let's say that I wanted to increase the shadows of some of the dark areas in my photo. I can go ahead and slide shadows. I'm just going to slide it up to 100 so that we see the change much quicker. Then I can adjust the size of my brush over here. I've got size, I've got feather, flow, and density. I'm going to leave the flow and density at 100 and I'm almost always going to leave the feather at 100 as well. That'll make it so that our adjustment is really feathered and it's hard to tell exactly where we've made that adjustment. You don't want to do low feather because then you create a really hard edge like that and it doesn't look good. So we want to do 100 feather and then adjust the size as you see fit. And if this black screen comes up, go ahead and just toggle show overlay. And then you will be hiding the overlay when you paint on here. Now, now, if you're noticing it's not doing anything, you may have to come back down and bring the shadows or whatever you're trying to adjust up one more time, right about in there. And then I can just paint and adjust certain spots on my image as I see fit. Now, again, this is using the brush. In order to do that, you can go up here and toggle the eyeball uh, by pressing and holding, turns it off, releasing, turns it back on. Now you've got a bunch of different options up here. You can rename this mask. So if you wanted to rename it like uh, 
background brighten, you could do that so that you knew exactly what it was. Um, and you've got a few other options of like intersecting masks, doing things like duplicating. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second here. So this is the simplest way to do that. If you decided you didn't like the adjustment, again, you could go down, you could make some adjustments here. Uh, you could do any of these sliders. You could do point color, which is pretty new. You could do the curve. You could do some effects, some grain, some detail, whatever you want. You can do it all. But if you didn't like it, you could go ahead and click on the three dots and go ahead and delete background brighten. Now, the next way that you can create a mask here is using a linear gradient. This is one of my favorite ways of creating a mask. And so I'm going to click the linear gradient. The way the linear gradient works is I click and I drag and it creates a mask like this. Remember, white will be totally selected. Black will be totally unselected. Anything in between will be partially selected. So this is a good way to make a really feathered adjustment so that you can't tell that I've done anything to the image. Um, for the sake of this, I want to uncheck show overlay and then move this. I want to make a little adjustment to the foreground flowers here. I want to just go ahead and increase the saturation, maybe increase the exposure, maybe decrease the highlights. Let's just increase this a little bit more so you can kind of see what we've done here. Now I can toggle this uh, before, after, before, after. You can see how this has just hit the foreground here. But one thing that you might be noticing when I toggle this, we are affecting a little bit up here. It's kind of bleeding over. Now, sure, we could lower this like that. Uh, which unfortunately, if I do that, is going to reduce the amount of feather. It's going to be a lot more obvious that we've applied that effect. I'm going to leave this like this, and I'm actually going to subtract. So when I click subtract, I'm going to combine another kind of mask in order to remove um, part of the mask out. So I'm going to subtract. I like subtracting with a brush. I'm going to increase the size, and I'm just going to come in here with my brush and paint through just like that. Now, if you wanted to reduce the density, you could. Reducing the density would make it so this effect applies much slower. It would be like the equivalent of using like opacity in Photoshop. So if I did 50%, I'd have to do two passes to totally make something dark. Now I can show overlay and you can see how we've kind of painted this out a little bit. And you can see how powerful this is. So you can see um, the original mask here is the linear gradient. And then when we subtract the brush, just like that, it comes up with this mask. Now we've done a lot better looking adjustment. Now I want to jump over to this photo and show you a couple examples that I've already done. So on this particular photo, you can see right here, I used a linear gradient mask and I've used that to just kind of add a little bit of contrast to the foreground. And right here, I've combined a couple of different masks. You can see I've combined a radial gradient with a luminance range, which we're going to talk about in just a second. You can see how I've kind of added a little bit of glow there. I want to go ahead and delete these masks and I'm going to show you how to make them. So the radial gradient is the next one that we want to do. Now the radial gradient is pretty cool. Um, it's really similar to the linear. You click and drag and it creates a circle. You want this feather to be all the way at 100. If you want it to be on the outside, you can click invert to make it just like that. But usually I'm not inverting it. I'm going to use it just like this. So again, check the show overlay box and you can move it freely on the image. Now let's say we want to add a little bit of glow. So I'm going to add some exposure, maybe decrease the highlights, increase the whites. I might scroll down here and I might decrease the dehaze. And let's bring up the exposure again. And let's bring up the saturation. So that is looking pretty good. Just like that. Let's actually make this circle a little bit different size. The nice thing is you can go back and adjust these any time as you see fit. Now, when I toggle this before and after, before, and after, I actually want to make this a little bit taller so that it hits some of the water down here. There we go. Just like that before and after. Now, one thing that I don't like is it's affecting these rocks right here. I don't want the rocks to be bright and that doesn't look very realistic when you do that. So I'm going to use subtract. Once again, this time I'm going to subtract a luminance range. I'm going to show you how this color and luminance range work. But when I subtract the luminance range, it brings up an eyedropper. I can click on the photo of the luminance range that I want to subtract. Luminance meaning essentially brightness. 
So if I click on the bright spot up here, it's going to subtract the very brightest areas. If I click on the dark, it's going to subtract the darkest areas. Let's see what happens when I click on this rock. You can see this is the selection right here. This is what's going to be getting subtracted from my mask, which is perfect. I want to be removing those rocks. Now you can make some adjustments here as you see fit. Um, you can slide these bars around. I'm not going to talk too much about that because nine times out of 10, you don't need to do that if you use a proper selection with the luminance range. So that's looking pretty good. But now let's show the overlay of the mask. You can see how we're brightening all of these areas and we are not brightening the rock now. So let's toggle what that looks like. We've got before, we've got after, before, after, and we are not messing with that rock at all. So it's looking really good. Now I wanna jump back over to this photo to show you how I would use the other kind of range mask, which is color range. Color range is just like luminance. Luminance selects uh, brightness values. Color range is going to select color values. So what I like to do here, uh, I'm using Command Plus on a Mac, that's Control Plus on a PC. I like to zoom in to my image and I want to select a color. So on this particular image, I think I wanna select the purples. I'm gonna select a purple that I feel like represents a good amount of the purple. Just like that, I'm going to click. I'm gonna zoom back out and take a look at that. Color range is kind of cool because you can adjust the refine. So if I increase the refine, I'm gonna get more of a selection. If I decrease it, I'm gonna get less. Now I am just looking for a good selection of the flowers. I feel like somewhere about in there looks nice, but now the problem is we are selecting up here, which we do not want to do. Once again, I can use subtract. I can go in with my brush. I'm gonna make a pretty big brush and I'm just going to paint these out just like that. Super quick, super easy, super simple. Now you can go back, toggle show overlay, and you can increase the saturation. Now we're just increasing the saturation of the purples. If you wanted to adjust the hue, you could do that here as well. If you wanted to change like the color of the flowers, a lot of different opportunities here in terms of things that you can do. And again, I'm just scratching the surface with what you can do here in local adjustments. You can go down the point color is a new feature that was recently added. I've made a couple of YouTube videos covering that. Highly recommend using this point color uh, combined with some of this local masking. You can do things like adjust the curve, which is really nice. All of these things you can do so easily in these local adjustments here. It's so nice to have them to be able to locally adjust your photo and not just focus on global adjustments. So now to kind of put it all together in terms of what we talked about so far, I want to show you on this particular photo, which happens to work out really well. I'm gonna do a luminance range and I want to select uh, maybe the brightest spots on my image. I'm just gonna go ahead and click over here. You can see that does a pretty good job and maybe I just wanna darken the very brightest areas or maybe I wanna brighten them actually. Let's go ahead and bring up the whites, kind of just punch those bright areas a little bit and increase the saturation. Now let's say that I also wanted to go ahead and adjust the orange color here, but I only wanted to do it in the foreground. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new mask. I'm gonna do color range. I'm gonna select this orange color here. I'm gonna increase the refine. Now you can see it's selecting all around the image though. I'm gonna click subtract. I'm gonna use the brush. Gonna decrease the size. Just come in here, paint this out. And you can see we're kind of painting over the edge a little bit. For the sake of the tutorial, I don't wanna spend a bunch of time painting, but you could reduce the size and go in like that. Now I can adjust this in my foreground to kind of match the photo a little bit better. You can see before um, it's not quite as saturated everywhere else. And then after we've helped to bring up that saturation to match the rest of the scene. Now, lastly, one way that I really like to add some emphasis to my photo is by using a radial gradient, which I'm gonna open here. Drawing it in the center of my photo, just like that, moving this over to the middle and then just increasing the exposure. Now this is nice when your subject is in the middle. Since my subject is on the left, I might wanna move this just a little bit, but just bring a little bit more attention to the subject of the photo before, after. So really the possibilities are endless. Uh, I do wanna show you guys one more thing for those of you guys that might not be doing landscapes if you've got photos of people. 
Now, the cool thing with photos of people is that you can see that Lightroom will automatically detect each person. So you can adjust different things on each person differently. So let's say we wanted to adjust the woman in the middle. I could click on uh, this image where it selects her. Then we can adjust all of the different options on her body. So for example, uh, facial skin, body skin, eyebrows, uh, iris and pupil, lips, eye sclera, uh, teeth, hair, clothes. Um, you know, there's there's so many different things you can do here. Let's say, let's just adjust the facial skin to begin with. You can go ahead and click create mask. That is going to create a mask of just the facial skin on that person. So you could see how you can adjust somebody uh, and you ha do have to do this in moderation because it can get uh, a little crazy if you go too overboard with it, but bringing up the shadows can always look nice. You can create a new mask uh, on select people. Once again, if you wanted to grab their teeth, create mask, you could kind of brighten the teeth a little bit. Possibilities are endless. I'm not really a portrait or people photo editor, but you can see the possibilities that are available for those of you guys that do know how to edit photos of people really, really well. So that is kind of the last feature there, but you can just see how powerful all of these tools are in order to create local adjustments in Lightroom to help you guys enhance your photos. Alrighty guys, well that'll do it. I really hope this was helpful for you guys. I really think that that'll give you really everything that you need to know in order to create really compelling local adjustments to help you level up your photography. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe if this video helped you and you want to continue to take better photos. I'm on a mission to help you guys to create better looking photos, whether it be landscapes or anything else. I wanna help you guys become better at photography. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.